Welcome to AJC Partners with me, Alan. Well, a few months ago, who'd have thought we'd be needing to consider social distancing in the workplace? But with most of Europe looking to come out of lockdown and resume some form of normal life, that's exactly the challenge that is facing most companies as they try to start back up. How can we keep our employees safe, maintain social distancing and maintain productivity levels that we had before lockdown. So if we consider the workplace by type, then we need to understand what are the operations in that area, how are management instructions communicated, and how is communication itself managed within that work, work area. It's these three things which we need to consider when we're looking at social distancing. Uh, another thing that we should consider, or which is going to influence us, is the level of PPE that currently exists within the workplace. And whether or not the addition of masks is going to um, make any difference to that. For the purposes of this discussion, I have more or less assumed that masks are no substitute to distance. Although as time progresses, medical opinion may start to be more firm about the use of masks uh, in the workplace. So I suppose the first thing to consider is um, whether we have a loan operator or a team. If we have a loan operator, then the problems faced are relatively um, small. We simply need to have floor markings in place um, with clear flow lines so that people coming into and out of their workstations, indeed into and out of the works, um, can clearly identify the routes they need to take in order to keep safe. And we've seen multiple examples of this um, in being used in retail at the moment. But where we have teams that are working, um, it becomes a lot more complex. And clearly we need to have floor markings and flow lines as, as before. Uh, but with a team, we might need to have um, timing and sequencing also taken into account. Uh, so for instance, one area of the workplace is occupied for 15 seconds by the first operator and then everybody moves on and it's then occupied by the second operator. Uh, these things, uh, it's the sort of thing you would see on a, um, a moving assembly line, um, something like a, a car production. We may need to install barriers, um, the types of perspex screens, again, that have appeared on, uh, on our television screens lately. Or we may need to simply um, extend the work area. Now, there are two ways of doing that. One is physically to extend the work area, which um, is definitely going to be um, costly. We might have to move machines and workstations and we uh, may not have the space to do that. So the second option then is to increase our occupancy uh, time of the work area. Maybe run a second productive period um, with half of the workforce. So uh, in total over a working day we get the same output but we do it over a longer working time. Again it will have cost implications. The other thing to consider is the degree of automation that we have in the workplace. Uh, and I'm talking typically here about transfer between workstations. And there's broadly two ways that we can approach this. Uh, one is, is low tech. Um, typically it's ingenious and very practical. And this can be gravity or manual movement of parts and some, or some form of two bin system. And then we have the high-tech uh, solutions. Um, these are generally clever and also quite costly, um, but they would in, uh, involve some form of robotics and we'd be moving towards a, an automated cell if we got into this level of um, uh, 
transfer between stations. But whichever option we go for, it needs to be able to maintain safe social distancing and it will be very highly dependent on the product that we wish to move between the workstations. So again, uh, lots of very um, bespoke solutions required here. We're going down into a, quite a level of detail. Let's turn now to the way that the workstation is controlled, the management instructions that are given out. They will typically fall into three categories, maybe one or two of them. First one would be verbal, generally a, a vague direction of travel for the, the, the day, and there would be frequent corrections through the day to ensure that the work was completed on time. Second would be um, a written list, uh, again, with corrections through the day as priorities changed. And then there is the, the planned um, production, low level of decision making, um, but with formalised reviews periodically through the day. Whichever one of these uh, you operate, and it will vary through your organisation, there is always the need for verbal communication to either confirm, redirect or validate what is going on. So we come to the problem of communication. In many environments, the noise level does not allow speech to take place easily. And typically, in order to have effective communication in the workplace, safe social distancing is not possible. So we need to consider how do we compensate for this. Um, one of the funny things you can try is uh, try to communicate without speaking. It gives you some idea of the uh, complexity of the task, you're tr of the problem you're trying to solve. So we can go for increased visual standards. Um, you may have some, but they probably need to go to a much higher level if we're going to try to communicate with minimum talking. Uh, measures and targets will also need to be clear uh, for quality, for production rate, for um, the size of interim buffers and for the presentation of parts. These, these are the sorts of things that need to be um, visualised within the workplace. And where we do need to have communication, we need to consider maybe the use of telephones between operators, um, writing boards. An intriguing um, opportunity for me is if we're putting in perspex barriers into the workplace, can we use these also to write on, to communicate with? Uh, not quite sure how that would work out, but it's an intriguing possibility for me. Or can we create meeting areas where social distancing can be maintained as well as um, a noise level which makes it easy to, to talk and com communicate? So these are lots of issues, practical issues, that need to be addressed if we're going to keep the workforce safe. Um, now let's turn to the tools and techniques that we can apply. And the good news is that these are well-known tools and techniques which will help us. The Humble Workplace Organisation, 5S, uh, when we introduce that into a company, there are generally um, two objectives. One is to maintain or increase productivity, and the second is to um, create a safe working environment. So. Um, I see no need to change those as objectives for most 5S implementations. It's simply that the level of uh, the requirements for safety have changed. And added on to this, there is the, the spaghetti diagram. But to make this work effectively in times of social distancing, we might need to actually draw it to scale, to proper scale, and to link it with timings of the work cycle. 
so that each operator knows where they should be at the time of uh, at the particular time within the cycle. Reasonably choreographed work, not unlike what takes place in a, a modern um, uh, automotive assembly factory. Then we come to solving problems. Now, most of the problems that will be unearthed in this situation of minimum communication will be low level. They need to be solved at the lower level. And I would be surprised if a good 50% of them could not be solved simply by going, creating a problem statement or defining the problem properly. I'm sure that most operators would be able to find a working solution. If necessary, we could supplement that with um, a simple five Y or cause and effect diagram. But what is important is that the outputs of those discussions are then made visible and brought out to the production line so that they can support communication where communication, verbal communication, is difficult. Then we have management information boards. These should be recorded live information entered by the operators which demonstrate if we're achieving standard and what the current trends are so that we can identify problems um, and support the resolution of those pretty quickly, making the, the feedback loop as short as possible. And the other area of information which is going to help us a lot is measuring our utilisation. We need to be productive, but we also need to be um, keeping our employees safe. So we need to be measuring what our utilisation is of our key resources. Most of the time this is machinery or it's labour, could also be materials of course, uh, and we need to make sure that we're measuring that and that we understand where we have value-adding activities and non-value-adding activities, even if we can't influence the non-value-adding activities at the moment. And of course, when we've got uh, machines and labour working together, we need to make sure that the uh, combined cycle of these two critical resources is designed that it produces the optimum output of both. Now, with these resource utilisation numbers, we can start to see if we are um, achieving anything like we had before we went into lockdown. And if we're not, we can identify where we need to be working and how dramatically we need to be working on it. How energetically, I should say. So with all of these things to consider, when we arrive back at our workplace, we've got a lot to do. And I would guess that the uh, capacity of management is going to be very stretched. So my suggestion is that we seek to engage uh, all operators and employees to manage as far as possible their own workplace. As we get back, into the workplace, there is going to be a window of opportunity when everybody comes together to consider how things are going to be. There's going to be a, a, a fresh approach and we should be able to make use of that the minute we get back into work. It won't exist for that long, maybe a week, maybe a bit longer, I'm not sure. But if we're not there to to grab that openness and that willingness to get involved in things, then we will have lost an opportunity. So getting our operators involved in this at the earliest opportunity from restart is critical to the success of every organisation. So, if what I've said has um, been of interest, then please get in touch with AJC partners and ask your questions, talk things through, maybe we can be of help to you.